Hey, see, join the channel here over on Subscribestar. Thanks to everyone who has. So what happened? Well, Great American Family becomes fastest growing network on cable despite left-wing outrage over tr traditional values. And you know, the funny thing is like ordinarily, I, I would make fun of all these sort of networks, but once you kind of start going down the rabbit hole, the culture war, I see things differently in a way that I never would have seen even even a year ago. I just don't, I just have a different understanding. It's, it's kind of the one advantage of uh, making these kind of videos. You get a, a whole different perspective on the uh, on the culture war. So what happened was a religious channel happened and triggered some filthy, filthy commies who can't stand people doing something that isn't under their direct control. They are. Um, it's like what happened to tolerance no 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 you guys don't understand tolerance is a one-way street for them um, not everything has to be for all people and that that seems to be the one adage you kind of gotta like put down on a flag and just keep repeating that to people until they get it sometimes things are in conflict you can't have blt stuff with uh, religious people and uh that includes all three abrahamic religions at least the orthodox versions of them who think that uh, they think that behavior is a sin, and sometimes there is no reasonable accommodation. There's they're uh, up, they're com directly opposed to each other. There's just nothing. There's no median in the middle with that kind of thing, um, and people tend to focus on one Abrahamic religion as opposed to the other two. But it's like it, if it says the same thing for all of them, it's like somehow you never you never bring up those other religions. It's only it's only Christianity that they go after. It's like there are other bakers, you know. No, 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 no. We're just going to the Christian baker. There's a, there's like a Muslim bakery right next door, a Jewish bakery right on the other side. It's like, you gonna, you gonna ask them to bake your, no, 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 no. We're just going to the Christian bakery. We're not bigots. Yeah, you are. You are. That's the funny thing is like, you really are the worst people on earth. Anyway, so, um, GAF, Great American Family Network, uh, is the fastest growing network on cable despite left wing outrage and when are, when are they not outraged over well i mean when they're, they're not outraged over like trans drag queen story hour or, or kids being you know turned into things that that they're a okay with um so this network is uh, doing pretty well on cable it's traditional values despite the blt anger over the lack of uh, blt inclusivity in their shows it's like well there is no meeting in the middle you can't have would you okay so uh would you have a christian themed or, or jewish or muslim or hindu themed shows allowed on on your other networks like with a with an open catholic uh, message like some show would be streaming on on you know nbc and it would be like a legitimately hardcore Roman Catholic show or Lutheran or whatever. I don't know all the religions, but you know what I mean? It's like, you don't see that stuff in the mainstream. So why would this one little tiny network off in the middle of nowhere? It's like, this is one infinitesimally tiny, tiny little network. And like all the other networks are completely, you know, complete cultural Marxist nonsense. But you got to have like, you got to have 100% domination of, uh, of BLT-ness. So um, so this is doing well despite uh, despite the uh, the pseudo outrage on social media about like you know how many networks are there on, on like on on TV cable and then on the internet there's there's got to be like hundreds of mainstream network networks with you know more 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 videos and movies and streaming shows that you could possibly watch oh yeah yeah but there's this one it's the it's the the given. A, GAF now, Great American Family Network. It's like, yeah, yeah, but they have traditional family values. What do we have to do? Well, we got to put all our energy into them and destroy them. It's like, it seems like there could be better uses of your time than that. So what happened was the Hallmark Channel CEO. There was like a, a bunch of those time for channel. I don't know, like Lifetime, Hallmark. I, know, I kind of put them all in the same category, but I, I get, I guess they're not all in the same category. Some of them are woke. So the Hallmark Channel CEO left in 2020, and he jo joined uh, GAF. Because Hallmark began to prioritize diversity, inclusion, and equity over family-friendly videos, i.e. they got woke, which means usually <clears throat> anti-white, misandrist, anti-tribal, anti-nationalist, endless just Frankfurt School, nation-destroying propaganda. They got cringy. It's like they do this stuff, and, and do you think an audience is suddenly going to kick down the door? But so it's all BLT, pox, walks, furry, other kin. Jimmy has four dads, and um, I'll leave out the joke about the monkey pox. Um, so this uh, this George uh, 
Zarildis guy, the vice president of programming for Hallmark Media, decided to go woke in 2020, probably because Larry Fink told him to, and, and that was that. They, I mean, whatever BlackRock is investing in is what, what will get made. They do this stuff all the time. They What do they call it, ESG or something? It's just, it's like, so is that just Frankfurt School globalism? Yeah, yeah, that's what ESG is. It's just, it's just Marxism. They, um, they wait until the market is established, and then they start making it woke. It's a bait and switch for the, uh, the customer. So when Hallmark decided to bend over for Glad, some of the top stars decided to leave and help make GAF the fastest growing network, which uh, keep in mind Hollywood last year lost uh, $542 billion across all the networks. So that's half a trillion dollars. By anyone's metric, that's a very serious chunk of change. You know, the Wooflu had a lot to do with it, and it's going to bounce back. But um, it will bounce back with higher ticket prices, but it won't bounce back, bounce back with actual people uh, engaging in the content. You're not getting as many butts in seats because for some reason, people are, are dipping out of Hollywood, out of the theaters, out of the streaming shows, and out of Hollywood in general. So they're just raising prices to make up for it. So the bottom line still looks pretty good, but you're getting fewer and fewer people. And it's kind of interesting from a cultural standpoint because fewer and fewer people are on the same. I did a video and talked about that before. They're on the they're not on the same cultural page anymore. So you're disseminating these ideas. It's not just that they're not on the same page, but they're not responding to the ideas in the same way, and it becomes a very I don't know balkanized, fractured, fragmented. Um, society like tonight i was listening to you know eliza schaefer on rumble and and uh, you know some other guys on odyssey and you know people who some there's some there's some youtube channels um i think that who's the guy revenge of the sis or something the nightwave radio guys i haven't listened to those guys in years and they do a stream on rumble it's like they it's an exclusive rumble stream to get people over to rumble and i was listening to that and um but it's like so you know you got 400 people in one chat and like four thousand people in another chat and that, that's just, I kind of wonder if that's, it's like, oh, people are kind of doing their own thing. Yeah, for some reason, like alarm bells are going off in the back of my mind that people are on. They're getting further and further away from a common shared culture and a common understanding. I mean, the ship has sailed. Don't get me wrong, the ship has sailed. It's just that I'm feeling alarm bells going off for some reason. Anyway, so, um, well, I mean, there's, if you look at America, it's like, yeah, there's a, a lot of people are feeling those alarm bells. It's like, it's very important at this time to, to form communities and, and reach out and form those networks, this, especially the IRL stuff, which is, you know, that's what, that's what all social media is really good for, Gab and Telegram and that kind of stuff. Anyway, so they, they're making this great American um, network, the fastest growing network. They do a bunch of Christmas movies, you know, that kind of family stuff. Then they have a seasonal programming, uh, an autumn harvest stuff and uh, the uh, winter stuff whatever I, you know, obviously i don't i don't watch um that kind of stuff i don't watch tv at all in general i suppose um they have what they have a youtube channel too which i just subscribed to which uh, they feature original movies dealing with they said faith family and country everything that the bolshevik left wing you know drag queen story hour crowd hates and they released a statement saying like, well, they weren't going to, they weren't going to do any BLT type of stuff. Yeah, this kind of stuff. You know, it's like you, you see these movies on Lifetime and, and Hallmark and, and those kind of channels, um, uh, like just, just endlessly. If, if you're living with women, they have this kind of stuff going on in the kitchen table, like all the time. Um, they weren't going to do any of those kind of BLT stuff because they have different values. And the weird thing with the left is that they don't believe in live and let live because if they allow you to go off in your corner and you're doing your own thing, then people will see how much fun your group is having and kind of what a lack of fun that the the left wing group is having because they're all you know if you saw there's there's a they have the video on YouTube there's some socialist the young socialist meeting or something and they get together and they're they're talking about their pronouns and and the geography of the area and who lived there before and uh, all their kind of their how they identify and their sicknesses and i mean it's insanity what you're hearing is uh, like it's it sounds like you're hearing like a french revolution but they don't actually they don't actually so for you guys are gonna have a revolution you're gonna go after that one percent huh you're gonna here's your guillotine knock your madam guillotine knock yourself out it's like no no no, we're not going after the one percent we're going after like the two to six percent oh that's that's weird why is that oh because like we're funded by the one percent ah so, like, were any of these revolutions organic, or was it all just horse horse feathers right from the start? Um, where was I going with this? 
Uh, the weird thing about the left is they, they won't just let you live and let live. It's the four panel meme where usually a bunch of guys uh, create something cool and then some whining kitty cats say that they need to come in and slowly seize power and the founding guys age out or they get shown the door and then the thing fails and then the guys go create something new and the cycle repeats. It's why you have to gatekeep right from the start. But the Bolshevik left loses their mind when you say, hey, we're going to go do our own thing over here. It might be some Christian thing or some other ideology group. Basically, any group of Europeans doing anything that's just them makes them lose their freaking mind, which is why you should always do anything that makes them panic is a, is a, is a good thing. Anyway, so when you start a network and say like, oh, we're going to stick with these Christian conservative nationalist values, whatever you want to call it, that suddenly isn't acceptable Um to the left, you're not free to just go off and have something just for your identity group. That doesn't fly for them. Whatever you do has to be open to them, but the reverse isn't true. You have to tolerate them, but they don't have to tolerate Christians, conservatives, nationalists. Religion or nationalism is fine for them, but it's not for you. It really is just as naked as it seems. They want total control. If your view is that the BLT stuff is against your belief system, well, they'll just call you istophobic and try to um, try to destroy you. It's not just that they won't watch the network because they weren't going to in the first place. I'm sure they're not watching Christmas movies. Obviously, they they would they would probably recoil in horror if they if, if they. I don't know what exactly if it was the the Euro pagan holiday that would terrify them or the Christian aspects of it. But they try to shut you down to prevent other people from hearing your viewpoints. They just call you bigoted, and then they decide for everyone that nobody should have access to your views. That's the weird thing, the real patriarchal thing about the left wing is their, um, I don't know, it's like they want to have a nanny state and outlaw words and outlaw ideas and have everyone live in a, this kind of controlled matrix. It's like, yeah, it's called a prison. So the left wing can't function unless they have total control. They can't have a woke social media environment that is just woke PC, Marxist, cringy, boring nonsense. Because if people can see the group next door actually having a great time with important conversations, it's not enough that people have separate spaces. They can't allow you to do your thing because they don't want your ideas out there at all. So they simply label you and your ideas as histophobic. Now, if the system was fair, this wouldn't be a problem. There might be a right-wing Facebook and a left-wing Facebook, but there isn't. There isn't any right-wing media on equal footing with left-wing media because they have Larry Fink at BlackRock, Soros, Schwab, Rothschilds, even Sam Bankman-Fried donating money left and right or funding these, these type of you know things. They have all the mainstream media and mainstream social media simply because they have the funding, the financial institutions and the media companies all working together to get a left-wing narrative pushed out there. And or sometimes with the right wing, you hear about the Daily Wire working with uh, Facebook and all the other so that all the other mainstream social media that people thought was left wing media. It's like it is. It's just that the Daily Wire is not right wing media. That's your first mistake in thinking it's on the right or it's conservative. It's not. So um, <clears throat> that's kind of a different video. I don't know if I've I've uh, exhausted the Daily Wire topic. So when something like Gab pops up, it's amazing that they do as well as they do. Keep in mind, that's like on a, you know, probably like <coughs> on a $10 million a year budget. It's it's not a whole lot of money. But Gab doesn't get any institutional investors. The quote-unquote right wing that gets deep pockets is the Con Ops Incorporated, the Daily Wire side of the equation, the big tech social media. Yeah, they're, they're right wing. They're totally right wing. It says so right on the label. Everything is fake and lighthearted and frivolous at least you know the left wing is fake but the conservative incorporated is there to fool you into a limited spectrum of allowable opinions and if you go outside the spectrum then ben shapiro will track you down and destroy you or charlie kirk or any of the other who's the others and there's i mean there's a bunch of con ops those, those type of people who are tied into the con you know that is one thing about the crowder um daily wire thing that's coming out it's like just ignore those people it's like whether you're for them or against them it doesn't matter it's that they're they're bringing to the forefront how the right wing machine works and that it is a machine and it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if you think any of these things are on your side they're not they're corporations are they vaguely right of center corporations only vaguely man like prager you and gateway and post millennial and all like da daily wire whoever else you can you come up with just they're not they're not anything other than corporations they're the rightest of the of the left wing spectrum they're not the left 
the furthest left of the right wing spectrum. They're not on the right at all. They're not conservative at all. They're just they're just corporations that will change their tune to to say or do anything to one control the narrative and two make money while they do that. And I said those in order of a, of I think what is important to them. Yeah, conservative gateway pundit with uh, Jim Hoff, I think. Anyway, um, it's also tiresome. It's more tiresome than I had previously imagined. It's yet even more tiresome than that. You know, trying to like trying to get that idea across to people on the right is like herding kittens a little bit because right wing is kind of just likes nothing better than to fight amongst ourselves for whatever reason. Anyway. Uh, check out the uh, GAF, I already, Great American Family Network. It's on YouTube. They have the YouTube channel, but then I don't know where their, their network is somewhere. Um, and then uh, join the channel and subscribe to so or become a member here if you wish. And I will see you guys all next episode.